You're listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I'm Pastor Josh. I would like to invite you to embark with me on a journey, a journey of biblical study. Through practical application of the Word of God, it is my prayer that you grow in greater relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Please join me as we journey to the next Stepping Stone of Faith. Okay, let's get right into this. Let's get going on this study. December 2nd, folks. December 2nd, 2019, this is the beginning of the Advent season. If you are part of this podcast, if you're part of the Stepping Stones of Faith family, there's going to be a lot, there's a lot going on right now and going to be a lot going on through the month of December. We are now starting the Advent season. December 1st started that. There is a daily podcast of Advent all the way through the, the December uh, the December, excuse me, month and through January. This goes all the way through and I've got my book here that I am looking at so that those of you that are watching the video know and those of you that are uh, listening, I am rustling pages <laughs> because I'm looking at dates. It goes all the way through to January 6th. January 6th this year is Epiphany. Uh, January 6th, 2020 is Epiphany. So that's we're going from December 1st to January 6th through Advent. Stay tuned to the podcast for continued daily Advent devotionals. But we are going to get started December 2nd. These four weeks on Monday is going to be looking at prophecies of Jesus and the prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament coming and being our uh, promised Messiah our sacrifice, those kinds of things. So go with me to Micah 5, chapter 2. Micah 5, chapter 2. And it says this. The Lord says, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but out of you will bring a ruler of Israel whose family line goes back to ancient times. Now, if you look at this for a moment, in my Bible, in my app on my internet site here, it says one of the small, one of the smallest towns in Judah, and out of you, I will bring a ruler of Israel whose family line goes back to ancient times. In other translations, I wish I knew what translation this was, but in other translations, it capitalizes the word ruler or or one, one of them says, one will come, one is capitalized, meaning Jesus. You know, he has come. This is the season to celebrate. You know, we look at this kind of stuff and we we wonder in, in our hearts, and I wonder in my hearts, you know, for for that time, what was Mary and Joseph's life like back in those days? What was it really like for them? You know, they are entrusted with God's, with God's child, God's offspring, they're entrusted with him. They're entrusted with raising him in a godly way. Can you imagine the pressure? Can you imagine the pressure? Of what was going on in their life in this time when, when they were uh, having this idea of raising the Son of God to uh, a place of holiness? Now, we don't know much about Jesus' early life. We know that he was born. We read about that in Matthew chapter 1, Luke chapter 2. We, we understand that and we know that. And then we hear about him at the age of 12 when he gets when he's in the temple ministering. And then after that, we don't hear about him again until his public ministry at the age of 30. So this kind of gaps in between storylines, we kind of wonder the questions of what it was like to raise Jesus. I'm sure it wasn't I'm sure it wasn't an issue. He didn't have any he didn't have sin. So I'm sure it was probably pretty easy. Probably pretty easy. But you know, you wonder about those kinds of things and and if we look back, you know, we look back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament is just basically a picture. It is a picture of Jesus. It's a picture of him coming. Let's let's go back and look not only at this, but let's look at Go back to the book of Exodus. Go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis, when it talks about the flood of Noah and his family, if you look at those particular things, if you look at those particular, uh, that that way of, that that is put out there. Noah built an ark. Jesus is called our ark of safety. 
But Noah built an ark. And there was one door in the, in the ark, right? There was one door in and out of the ark. The ark of safety kept them from death. Jesus, as we go through our life and we trust him, he is our ark of safety. There's only way, there's only one way to, to God the Father, one way to safety, and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said himself that he is the door, and there's no way to the Father except through him. So we understand that the picture of the ark of the book of Genesis the picture of that ark is a picture of Jesus Christ. We understand that, and we, and we we work on that, and we understand that. So what a wonderful thing, isn't it? This this prophecy of Jesus coming, all the way from the Old Testament to the fulfillment in the New Testament, and then beyond the Gospels, the relationship we can still have with Jesus through a, through a born-again experience relationship with him. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to see that and to know that and to grasp that? Man, I praise God for that. I praise God for that. Because, you know, when we when we think about things and we, we think about those kinds of things that we that we talk about and we do, you know, like last week we talked about grace and how grace uh, ministers to us. And grace is, was shown about from the beginning. You know, Jesus... Jesus was was the the whole plan of redemption, the whole plan of salvation, all of that was right from the beginning. And God began to send send glimpses of that plan of rescue, that rescue plan as some say. God began to show glimpses of that rescue plan through certain things in the Bible. The the uh, ark that Noah built the Red Sea, and the list can go on and on and on. And we see that here in this particular passage of Scripture. We see that he's now spelling it out. Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but but out of you will bring, well, I will bring a ruler for Israel whose family line goes back to ancient times. God uses small things to to confound the wise. You know, you, you, you go back to the book of Judges, you, you think about the book of Judges, and you think about uh, Gideon in Judges chapter 6. Gideon was the least in the whole clan of Israel. His, his tribe was the smallest, and he was the youngest. So in, in the... In the, in the aspect of that day if anybody was going to screw it up if anybody was going to screw it up guess who it was going to be Gideon he was the youngest and he was from the smallest tribe just like this one here just like this scripture here you are one of the smallest towns in Judah Bethlehem but out of you all bring a ruler of Israel whose, goes, whose line goes back to ancient times. So God uses the smallest things. What, what happened with Gideon? What happened with Gideon? Think about that story in Judges chapter 6. What happened with Gideon? Gideon, of course, you know, like us today, where he was human just like we are. You know, and he, he said, God, if this is really you, make the fleece dry and the ground wet. And God did that. He said, okay, then one more test. Make the ground ground the wet and the fleece dry. I think it's either one it's either that way or the other way around. But nevertheless, there was two tests that he had uh, God do in order to make sure that it was God. And he was the smallest one in Israel. He was the smallest one there, and the weakest one. Okay, pretty much. Really, if you think about it, he was the weakest one, and God used him. So he. So this in this town of Bethlehem, the smallest town, one of the smallest towns, one of the weakest towns, God was going to give bring strength from that town. What happened with Gideon? From him became strength to show the strength of God. It wasn't Gideon's strength. It wasn't the fact that he had all these men. Matter of fact, God whittled it down to three hundred men and Gideon. God told them what to do go around the city and at a certain time 
when, with your lamps that are lit, break the things that are covering your lamps and shout. And God caused confusion. And then in that confusion, the enemy killed themselves. Because so to show that Gideon could not say, look what we did. No, it's look what God did. And see, Bethlehem itself, Bethlehem is small and weak. It's one of the smallest. You can't say, well, look what we produced. We produced the king. No, you didn't. God did. And God began to show that all the way through what we're going to be looking at in the next four weeks. How God used the smallest town, the most insignificant people, Mary, Joseph, and the most insignificant things, the, 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 the things that were um, um, very small, very meek, to confound the wise, to bring about the glory of God. And see, that is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's what Christmas time is all about. We, we focus on Jesus. We focus on God. We focus on what he's done for us, what he's given to us. The grace that was given to us from the beginning all the way to now. It's that kind of stuff we focus on. We focus on those things. Look at what Jesus, look, look, at, the, look at what he did. He chose the back in the book of Revelation. I mentioned this last week. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 8, and following down, or verse, I believe in context, is verse 5. Following down, it says that basically it says that, that Jesus was the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So the grace was started prior to that. Jesus made the decision to be our sacrifice prior to creation, thereby giving us all of these clues through the Old Testament of his deity and these this is just one of the things we're going to be looking at next week we'll be looking at another old testament prophecy of jesus christ what a wonderful wonderful season stay tuned like i said stay tuned every day there's going to be a short podcast it's not going to be 10 15 minutes long it's going to be a short podcast going through the advent devotional time as we look to Christmas going from December 1st started and started on December 1st going all the way to January 6th so in all of that it'll be good it'll be good for you to stay tuned so stay tuned to all of these things subscribe like to share the videos on YouTube subscribe to the podcast and you'll get notified whenever something else comes new all right you can also leave a question and a comment for me or a prayer request and a praise report on the Stepping Stones of Faith Message Center. The number there is 815-348-9629. The number again is 815-348-9629. And I say this in every single time I mention that you can leave a prayer request or a praise report. If you're leaving those things, make sure you want those, you indicate that you want those things private or public public means that it will be used on the podcast possibly that's the first part the second part is if it is a prayer request it will be used in my church and our in our public prayer prayer and sharing time as well as the sunday night bible study it will be shared there for prayer and it will and i will write it down and pray for it in my own private prayer time that is what public means if you want it to be private May, say, say, keep this private, please, Pastor Josh. And I will write it down and pray for it privately for you, and that's as far as it will go. Okay? But if you do not indicate either way, then I will, indi- then I will deduce that you want it to be kept private, and I will keep it private. You'll have my word on that one. All right? So call that number for any of those things. If you want to leave a question or comment, the question will be used on the podcast, so if you want to do that, know that further in advance, that if you leave a question, I will use it on the podcast, and uh, I will answer that question, okay? So leave that, you know, keep that in mind if you decide to do something like that, prayer, prayer request or question or comment, okay? So until next time, remember, God loves you. It's Christmas time. Be nice to one another. Focus on Jesus Christ this time of the year. So until next time, this is Pastor Josh saying God bless.